Okay, Dr. Simon Lepman, tell me about leadership in schools, because this is where our young minds develop their ideas for future work situations. I think leadership in, in independent schools uh, for many years has been a very ad hoc thing. Uh, certainly before 2004, uh, the associations didn't take a, a systematic approach to the training of young leaders. Uh, it was uh, left entirely to the, the external agencies and uh, the individual. And so I suppose if you had leadership ambitions, then one would seek out uh, additional qualifications outside the sector. Uh, and so for the first time in 2004, when HMC and the Girls' Schools Association merged for the purposes of professional development, for the first time we began to see uh, a systematic and structured approach to developing young leaders. Uh, and the, the fruits of that uh, are now the, the heads who are being appointed in their late 30s, early 40s who've been through that system. Uh, I think that uh, leadership development on the part of pupils uh, is still rather uh, in the dark ages. Uh, I don't think that we, we talk to young people quite enough about what leadership is. Uh, we still concentrate far too much on uh, offering them the opportunity to become the, the captain of the team or the head of the house uh, without talking uh, in more detail about the different leadership styles and how uh, you don't just have to be the, the large, uh, extravagant, uh, uh, noisy leader, that uh, we have quiet leaders, uh, and, uh, and they come in all sorts, sorts of shapes and sizes. So, Simon, how would you describe leadership, and would you say that leaders are born and not made? Well, it's, it's the nature-nurture argument. Uh, I tend to feel that uh, within us all we, we have the potential to lead, uh, in our new prospectus, I talk about the importance of leadership and the importance of searching for the leader inside yourself. Uh, I think certain technical skills and approaches can be learned, but fundamentally I think that uh, we are born to lead. And what about other life experience? If you're going to be a top leader, do you have to have a number of careers before you are really able to be an inspirational leader? Uh, I think it helps a great deal. Uh, from my own point of view, this, this I've, uh, I'm now in headship before that, I, I taught heads before that, uh, I taught before that, I was in the police service. And so I, I bring to the table these days a range of experiences. And I think increasingly, uh, not just teachers, but, but senior leaders and heads themselves have had a range of experiences before they arrive in the head study. I know that when you were in the police force, uh, you were on the picket line on the miners' strike during that, that difficult time when, in fact, I was a journalist on the, the miners' mm. strike as well. What did you learn about leadership in the police force in that time? Patience, uh, resilience, thoughtfulness, to appreciate the views of others. Uh, I think that uh, we, we sometimes forget that uh, leadership is not just about uh, learning from uh, the technical textbooks. It's about uh, living the experiences. And I think that uh, that experience made me a better human being, not just a better leader. And looking back now, um, from going back into school, would you have any ideas for the current police force in developing their leadership? Yes, I think that uh, in, in my day, back in the mid-1980s, uh, it was textbook taught. and. Uh, uh, some of it was experiential. Uh, we had a limited period with a tutor constable, for example, but I think that uh, the way to learn leadership is to work with leaders very closely and to, uh, to encounter people who help you to make sense of your experiences. So I think uh, more concentration on coaching is needed, both in the police service and certainly in, in my profession these days. Uh, just the ability to be able to sit down and talk through uh, the complex business of those myriad experiences with someone who has lived through it themselves is incredibly invaluable. So how important is it to get heads of schools to know all the theory about leadership, what is transactional leadership, what is transformational leadership, or is it just the experiential? I think it's a balance between the two. I think it's th that's where things have changed in my sector, certainly. Uh, many, many more of the heads who arrive in head studies these days have uh, MBAs or MEDs or EDDs and so on. Uh, and more and more of them uh, are coming through now with, uh, with, with, with good experiences from coaches. 
Uh, and so uh, within the associations uh, we arrange a shadowing scheme and so you will have a tutor uh, as I had in the police service nearly 30 years ago. Uh, and that tutor visits you, you visit that tutor in his or her school, uh, observing and talking and listening and understanding. So I think it's, it's a blended experience really these days that, that, that makes the most difference.